2012 has come and arrived. And I'm going to start it off with a Mission Impossible review. So after seeing Valkyrie and Tropic Thunder, I was really hoping for something really great coming after all these two great movies. But we get something as night and day. Like literally, night and day. Hmm. Just by the trailer alone, I knew I didn't have to watch this. And yeah, it didn't do well. And yeah, it really screwed up his Tom Cruise action thing. So when MI4 was first announced, I wasn't really expecting much. I saw more of a way for Cruise to pump out more money from his cash cow. It's a pretty big cash cow. And guess what? I expected even less when I heard that they would pass on the baton to Jeremy Renner after this MI4 business. The fact that this series is passing off its main character to a new actor is pretty much a not doing well sort of sign. However, as I saw more of the trailers coming through as the release date was coming up, I was like, maybe I should give Cruz the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he will do well. And it was directed by Brad Bird. I mean, that can't hurt. So I ended up watching it at AVX Audio Visual Experience, which is one level lower than IMAX. And I sure wasn't surprised because, I mean, there was a lot of buzz going on that this film was pretty great. And sure, it was great, but pretty? Hmm. So the storyline pretty much is Rogue Agent again. It pretty much starts it off with Ghost Protocol being activated and all and everything. The Rogue Agent storyline film sort of thing has been pretty much done to death recently in my opinion. Fortunately here, MI4 is pretty different from all those previous Rogue Agent films. There's a clear bad guy. It's not the agency itself, but rather this dude. So to refresh your memory about all Mission Impossible knowledge, in the first Mission Impossible, Cruz was the rogue agent and he hacked in his own agency and to prove his innocence pretty much. The second one was someone pretending to be Cruz became rogue. Third one, Cruz had to fight a lot of rogue agents. So you have the cast, Tom Cruise, as Ethan Hunt, the team leader and protagonist of this film series. Cruz got his gusto back, for sure. To me, the best Ethan Hunt was in MI2. I mean, where he was so good as an individual, he was just like, hmm, I am the face of MIF. First MI, Ethan Hunt was pretty much a noob. New on stage, and he was learning everything. In the third one, he was a teacher. I mean, obviously, they were trying to pave the road for some other noobs coming up. Ghost Protocol is evident that Tom Cruise still has it in him, and he still has some action life in him. And I would not be surprised that MI567 will be Tom Cruise somehow. Connected. So next you have Paula Patton as Jane Carter, a member of Hunt's team. The MI series is sure is multicultural when it comes to its female leads. I mean the first one was French. Second was Zimbabwean English mix. Third was Irish Polish Vietnamese mix. For the fourth one we have an European American. Pretty standard stuff. Patton was in Precious. I haven't seen Precious, so I do not know the acting ability of Patton. I mean, she's attractive enough in MI4, and her acting was what I expected from the female lead of an action film movie. It's just to stand there and to be pretty. Simon Pegg as Benji Dunn, an IMF technical field agent and part of Hunt's team. All the humor pretty much comes from him. He's not new to the series, so that's nice to see a returning actor. One other actor has been through one, two, and three, and I'm not talking about Tom Cruise. This other actor, he's hardly in four, but he is there, so see if you can catch him. Peg is Peg. What can I say? I'm biased. I love this British dude. I mean, whatever he does is great, and I appreciate it somehow. Jeremy Renner as William Brent. IMF Secretary Chief Analyst Hurt Locker. That's when I started seeing this guy and I'm like gotta watch out for him. Which was good timing. I mean Town came afterwards and he was pretty good in Town too with Ben Affleck starring. I didn't really care about him in SWAT or even 28 Weeks Later but maybe I should rewatch 28 Weeks Later. His acting here was alright, nothing epic. He just played an agent that was unsure about himself. Like should I follow my instincts? or the rule book of how I should act in front of people. There's more of the cast, but these are the IMF forces that you really need to know. I mean, there's a villain who really isn't hardly acting in this film. He just shows up and like, oh, oh, there's a villain, let's catch him sort of thing. And he doesn't really show up much, in my opinion, from my memory. 
nitpicks. There is one type of technology that gone through the Mission Impossible series for since the beginning, and I was totally looking forward to seeing it in MI4 Ghost Protocol. But in this one, they talk about it, you see it being produced, but you never see it being used. Just seeing the way it was being made, I knew it's got a technological facelift for sure. There was a cameo of it being used by a bad guy, but that was the old stuff. I want to see this new stuff, but I guess I have to wait till MI5. I marathon all three Mission Impossibles right before I watched the fourth one, and I must say it's pretty much all action now. There is hardly any mystery or any like suspense or any like really thinking. It was pretty much bad guy, kick his ass, save the world. I guess movies nowadays are just moving on with the times. I mean, nowadays it's all action and that's what we get. I mean, action films sell. We're telling what the directors and writers and everybody what we like and that's what they're pumping out and we keep going into the masses and it's just be it's a cycle of justification of action movies because everyone loves action movies in my opinion i want a return of the mystery to where the first mission impossible where you didn't know what was happening you're like oh my goodness like who is who like what's happening to ethan hunt sort of thing like everything's crazy you would think that it would be a thriller or drama but with the mission impossible factor Mission Impossible, the first one, had that mystery and impossible factor in it, and it was great. I hope Brad Bird can bring the series back to its roots somehow in the fifth installment. One other nitpick is that I swear I didn't laugh as much as the previous three combined. The three previous Mission Impossibles combined, I did not laugh compared to Mission Impossible 4. There's a lot of humor in this one. Not that I'm complaining. Actually, yes, I am complaining. Humor is not really needed for the MI universe, I think. A third one was pretty serious in the end, where it was like, Oh, my wife is gonna die. I have to tell her about my life. Oh, oh, oh I gotta do something. Like, oh my new- oh, I'm actually gonna die here. Maybe this is me being naive or childish, but I seriously believe that in the film universe that M.I.F. was real. But with all this humor, it feels like these Asians are just walking in the park and going like, Hey, the world needs saving. So let's just stroll on over there, laughing out loud and just save the world as a side dish sort of thing and not the main dish. So that's my nitpicks. This movie is another technology I can't do for sure. I mean, the BMW is wow. I just can't believe that it's gonna be an actual car on the street one day. It's gonna be like really crazy seeing those kind of cars out there. With its success, the fifth one will be coming out in no time. So of course, go watch this in theaters. I mean, in IMAX for sure, if you have it in your local region. I mean, it'll be awesome if you can get AVX like me, but if you really have IMAX, just go forward the IMAX. I mean, some stuff were filmed in IMAX. It's made to be in the IMAX. I can't wait for the fifth one, actually, too. It may be linked to the TV show more than we think. Oh, speculations. So much fun. So that is all my review of MI4 Ghost Protocol. Oh. Like it, check it out, and see you Friday.